Welcome back. We're talking about epidemiology and this is video, I think, four in a series. We At this point, we're talking about study design. We've talked about the fact that epidemiological studies can be observational or experimental, right? Now we're on to the experimental ones, right? This is where we really believe we can get a stronger, a stronger sense of the evidence of causation between an exposure and an outcome. And how does it work? Let's have a quick look. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The starting point is we've got a population. That population gets divided into two groups, an intervention group in which we do something. We either give them a drug, uh, we tell them to jump up and down, do physical activity, go for a run. Maybe we tell that group to stop doing something, but there's an intervention. We, something gets done in that group and that thing does not get done in the non-intervention group. Okay, and then of course, for both groups, we measure the outcomes, the extent to which an outcome of interest occurred or, or didn't occur. Now, what is powerful about these things is this. Randomized control trials mean that confounding variables are controlled for. And what do I mean by that? Let's take a quick step back and better understand what we mean by confounding. Confounding is when there is an alternative explanation for a correlation that we see between an exposure and an outcome. Okay, so does eating ice cream, people being more likely to be attacked by a shark? No, but there is a relationship between ice cream eating, you know, the, the, the number of people that eat ice cream and the number of people that get eaten by shark attacks, that there's a correlation but that correlation isn't real. They're both associated with warm weather. Okay, uh, so, you know, the temperature goes up, people eat more ice cream, the temperature goes up, people are more likely to swim in the sea and get eaten by a shark. Right, when we do a randomized control trial, because the population is randomly assigned into the intervention and the non-intervention group, every imaginable confounding variable is equally distributed in both groups and so cannot account for a difference in the outcomes that are measured. Okay, that does assume that we start with a nice, uh, we're do, dealing with a large population that gets divided into the two groups, so we need a good sample size, firstly, and secondly, that the distribution is truly random, and if that's the case, all of these possible confounding variables should be equally distributed into the two groups and can't possibly account for a difference in the outcome that we measure, and that's why randomized control trials um, control for confounding. I hope you found this useful. Um, we're doing more videos on Epi, so you know, stay tuned. You can download this PDF and any of the PDFs that I use at learnmore365.com. There'll be a link on the screen. Stay tuned. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. My name's Greg Martin. Like, subscribe, comment, etc., etc. Okay, hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye.